Welcome back. I'm Stephanie, and this is Texas Speech Knits. It's still August, and we are back to school. And since we are back to school, we I am probably back to my once a month video schedule. However, today I decided that I needed to split my knitting content and my spinning content because I just had way too much to show for a single podcast. So I'll be trying to film a spinning podcast in the next day or two and then there will be two podcasts. So maybe maybe that might be my new normal. First of all, if you didn't notice I am wearing my Acorn Trails sweater. It does not have buttons yet, but I'm okay with that because it's 107 degrees outside today and I do not need a wool cardigan in this weather. But this is my Amy Herzog Acorn Trail cardigan. I began this last October and I am just thrilled to have it finished. I am really happy with the work I did to measure myself, knit it in pieces to the correct size, block all the pieces, and then sew them together um, to, to then put the button band on at the end. So it was multiple steps. It was probably the most involved cardigan I have ever knit myself. And I am just really, really pleased with how it turned out. Now, I'm gonna stand up and show you the how the cardigan fits, and I will probably talk more about it in a few minutes during my finished objects, but I have a little bit of knit-along, make-along news that I wanna cover before I get into finished objects and before I get into my my problem. So I'll stand up and show you how this cardigan fits. So I knit this cardigan a little bit shorter than she recommended. I knit, knit it to 14 inches, um, which I'm really glad I did because it's plenty long on me. I believe I knit the 44 inch and it is seamed up the side and the back has this beautiful cable the sleeves have twisted rib detail and that is the same on the button band that was picked up at the end so this is an acorn cable this is a lace pattern, which is repeated on the back with the feather cable too. And I think I have enough give here to be able to put buttons on um, and be able to wear it comfortably. Though honestly, in Texas, you almost never have to button up your cardigan. So this will get a lot of use this winter and I'm just super thrilled with my seams I feel like they are really neat and tidy, and I'm very happy with them. So I'll talk more about this later. Y'all, it is so hot. And I know that in a lot of places in the world, there are a lot of really horrible fires and things going on, especially in Hawaii and Canada. And it has been so hot here, and it has not rained. And we cannot water our lawn enough. Like even if we wanted to keep our lawn green and were willing to water our lawn as much as it would take, I don't think you could water your lawn enough to keep it green. So I am just I am just really hoping that fall gets here soon, that the weather changes that it starts to rain because I don't want to have 
fire things. I mean, no one wants to have fire, wildfires or whatnot in their neighborhood. And we actually, several years ago, had it uh, a, a time that someone accidentally um, started a fire and we have a ranch behind our home and it was in the middle of January, believe it or not, but it had been a really dry January and that ranch just lit up and we had to evacuate our house uh, because I could walk out the back door and I could see flames. <laughs> so that is a very frightening place to be in. And luckily in that case, um, there was a change in the wind that evening. Like they really, I think thousands of acres were burned. Um, and there was a change in the wind and they were able to contain the fire once the sun had gone down. So, um, so we just have to pray for all the people affected by the fires and that all the areas of the United States that are in drought right now that have had no rain, that the, the weather will change. So that's my, my little talk today, but that's not my problem, but it is a problem. I, uh, I mean, we're to the point where we want to know where the important things are. So if we do have to evacuate, we already have everything ready and we can go because um, even though there are no fires right now, we are at the most high fire danger level uh, for our area and it's been that way for weeks. So it's not getting better. So we just we just really need some cool air and some rain. And yesterday it was 111. And I think it was, it broke the record for, it's been breaking the record almost every day. So, and not in a good way. <laughs> so in happier news, um, I won Jessica of Cafe Bean Counter Knits podcasts um, giveaway that she had for getting to 100 subscribers. And if you have not subscribed to Jessica of Cafe Bean Counter Knits, she is delightful. She knits beautiful socks and she has excellent taste in yarn and colorways. So if you really enjoy seeing new yarns, new colorways, fun socks, I would go subscribe to Jessica's channel because she is wonderful and she knits beautiful things. She does knit more than just socks, but I think she's been doing summer sock camp. So there's been a lot of socks this summer, but I don't mind. I enjoy seeing what she is up to. But so she had a giveaway and I commented on her episode for that giveaway and I won. So she sent me this yarnable, which I have never used yarnable, uh, called Life is Buddha. And I just adore this colorway. This is the Plush Sock 85 Superwash Merino 15 Nylon. And I love this copper streak and this kind of greenish gold color and then it has this big gray splotch and so I'm looking forward to knitting something for myself out of this because these are definitely colors that I enjoy and I'm very happy to get to try Yarnable for the first time because I've never subscribed. As you all know I have a very small yarn budget. So it is fun to win yarn. <laughs> but she didn't just send this. She sent something for you. She is so kind. She said she wanted me to include these in my fluff your stash prizes. So I have two skeins. And so on my 
next episode I record, not the spinning episode, but my next, um, the beginning of September episode when I announce the rest of the fluffier stash winners, I will pull two winners. And I'm going to show you this one first. I, there's two. They're both awesome, but one is my favorite. So, uh, first she sent this woolly lizard, and this is a 92% superwash merino wool and 8% lurex, which I think is the sparkle. And this is teals and purples and oh so sparkly. So one winner will receive this skein along with a skein of something else that I have fluffed out of my stash to be determined. And the next winner will get this one which I love. <laughs> Uh, this is Cafe Creations, and it is the Blueberry Muffin colorway. Isn't this so fun? So teal and purple again, which I love. I love purple. And it also has this really bright green and these splotches of red and orange, which I love. So this is Blueberry Muffin, and this is Biscotti Sock 4-ply finger, fingering, and 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Muffin. So one winner will receive the Wooly Lizard and a skein from my stash, and one winner will receive the Cafe Yarn Cafe Creations and a skein from my stash. So I'll, I'll pull them in order um, and we'll see who wins. Thank you so much, Jessica, for donating these skeins to my podcast. And I just know that whoever wins them will love them as much as I do. Now, the next giveaway that I will be sharing on the next episode in September, not my spinning episode, will be my one year anniversary giveaway. And that is where I am giving away a Texas Peach project bag that I will be making. This one is a prototype, but it will look very much similar to this, maybe a little bit different. And I am going to include the other mini skein set from Liz of You and Die. And I think they look cute together. So I will be putting those together and I'll probably include some Texas Peach stitch markers as well in that prize. Now the way you win this giveaway is by leaving a question for my Q&A in the comments. So if there's anything you have been wondering about or anything you would like to know or you just want to ask a question, you can think of a random <laughs> question so you can answer enter the giveaway. I am keeping track of all of the questions and who left them so that I can do a random number generator and pick a winner for my one year podcast anniversary. So that will be on the September episode as well. Thank you all so much for sitting through the giveaway talk. I know it is a lot this time. And it's fun though, right? I mean, we, we all like winning things. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is a really special collaboration that I am doing with Holly of Mystery Mouse Knits and Emily of the Woldenburn podcast. The three of us really love to read and we have very similar tastes in books. We all really tend towards those like classic, just lovely, makes you feel good kind of um, fiction. So 
we are going to start a little book club. And so it does not completely take over our lives. Our plan is to open the book, book club seasonally, read a book, and then close the book club. So if you don't want to read the book we're reading that season, you can not join for that one and wait and find out what the next one is. So we are calling this the Fancy Reading Needlecraft Club. And it is going to be just all about feeling fancy and reading fancy classics. So we are going to have a private telegram group. And if you would like to join, the way you get in is you send me an email to texaspeachnits at gmail.com. And I will add you to the Telegram group. We will be discussing our book in Telegram. And Holly, this time, is going to have a special colorway to go with our book. So you will have the opportunity to pre-order that if you would like to. I'm not really planning on anything big and dramatic this time. This is kind of a trial run, and I really just want to read a fun book with friends and talk about it. So we will discuss in the Telegram group. I will have a reading schedule for us for when we should talk about different parts of the book so that we don't spoiler anything for anyone. And... It's possible that Holly and I and maybe Emily, if we can get our schedules together, because we're all different time zones and such, um, we might do a group podcast just talking about the book. Um, we might host a Zoom call for anybody in the Telegram group. I don't know about that because that's really hard to schedule with people's time zones. Talking through Telegram is the easiest, I would say, but we'll see. So this is round one of the Fancy Reading Needlecraft Club, and I'm very excited to share the book we have decided to read. We will be reading by Louisa May Alcott, An Old Fashioned Girl, and this book is um, written by Louisa May Alcott, who wrote Little Women, and it is about Polly, who is a country girl who goes to visit the city, and it has two different segments of her life. It has a segment when she's younger, and then it has a segment when she is older. This is a very sweet, very just like easy read, and it's a great book for fall. Emily of Goldenburn told me that it has a very kind of autumnal feel. So we are going to read this and discuss it. It's going to be very casual. We're not like, even though we call it fancy, I wouldn't call any of us uppity. <laughs> but we can also really geek out on this. So I am hoping to be inspired by the book to bake some new recipes, maybe cast on a book-inspired project, maybe put together some things that the book inspires me to um, new color combinations or um, different projects that I might not have usually knit. Maybe I'll make myself a, make myself a muff, <laughs> not that I need that in Texas. And so it's just going to be a lot of fun. So there's not really a lot of requirements other than sending me an email to get into the group and reading the book and discussing it. Now, if you just really don't like Louisa May Alcott or you really don't like this book, that's okay. We can still be friends and you don't, you don't have to join this round of the book club. But if we have a book in the future and you want to join, we would love to have you. So let me know what you think and join up in the fancy reading and needlecraft club. 
Okay, so before I get into my finished objects and telling you more about my acorn trail sweater and the other things that I have gotten off my needles, I want to talk about my problem. Now, I have been fluffing my stash and I went through all of these bins that I had in my bedroom where I store, I have a large Ikea shelf and I store all my yarns and all my projects. And I had, for one thing, I have a lot more just like random stuff than I really thought I did. It wasn't super organized um, and maybe a little disappointed in my in myself but one my eldest daughter helped me and we kind of sorted everything out we wound up some balls that had gotten kind of un unmanageable and i uncovered some clips now a long time ago i said that i was very comfortable having a lot of whips and this is true i am fine having five or six whips it's fine i really don't have a problem with that but in going through all of my things, I realized just how many whips I had, and not only whips, how many projects I already had yarn that I wanted to use to start those projects. So I have six whips that I am currently working on. So that's the comfort level whips, right? I've been working on those six things. But I also have six whips that I have not touched in over six months. So that's 12. So I have six things that have been just like stuffed away. Some of them have multiple parts, which could be considered more than one whip. Then I have four scrappy blankets. I have the three that I talked about last time, and I have the Zoom Loom hand spun blanket that I have been working on for years. It's a very long-term project. I'm not worried about these getting done quickly, but okay, so that's 12 plus four. Oh my, are we up to 16 whips? Okay, now things I want to knit that I already have yarn for. And these are just like the specific patterns that I already know I want to knit specific yarn with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. Okay, now I'm up to 24 projects. That's a lot of projects. I mean, I knit and finish a lot of things, but 24 seems like a lot to have going or ready to go. How many things do you have ready to go? I mean, it's okay. I'm not, I'm okay. I might be okay. I might not be okay. <laughs> so I need to decrease my whips because I want to be able to cast more things on. And I feel like I have so many things just like dangling that it's hard to start something new. <sighs> so that's okay. That's my problem. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the things I finished. Here's my finished objects. So I showed you my acorn trails sweater and I am just delighted with this finished object. I seamed the whole thing and usually I, I don't do seamed cardigans very often. So the arms are seamed up to the side. You can barely even see the seam. I mean, look at that. That is so good. Not to be proud of myself, but I am. The back is lovely. I picked up and knit the collar. And I ended up picking up a lot more stitches than what she called for. And then in just the first two rows, as I went around, I decreased the stitches. Now, I don't know about you, but patterns always say pick up and knit. So you pick up the loop and then you knit through the loop and that's the loop you keep and then you go do the next one. 
that drives me insane. I just pick up. And do you do that? I feel like it makes it much cleaner looking and I just try to keep them kind of snug. Maybe it's not as stretchy, but I really haven't had a problem since I usually pick up more stitches. So let me know what you do. Now I did do a little bit of shaping where she didn't have it, like right here where the neckline curved, I decreased a stitch so that this kind of went in a little bit. Do you see that? So these two kind of come together and that purl stitch disappears. And that was just because I wanted it to lay nice and flat. I picked up the button bands and these are the twisted rib as well. And a trick I learned, and this, this curves in a little bit, do you see that? Uh, a trick I learned, and I don't remember where I learned it, was when you get to the bottom of the button band, you always want to not skip stitches. You want to pick up as many as you can, and that does help it not curl at the bottom. Now, I haven't blocked the button band part yet, but I've had times where I've knit a cardigan and it has gone in a lot. So this is pretty good. And I think the other side is better. Let me see. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so here's the other side. So I try not to skip any stitches close to the ends to try to get this as straight as possible. So this was a two row buttonhole. And so this is going to need a pretty good size button and I'm going to use the button trick um, from the Nitty Cats where you use like the little clear button on the other side of your button uh, when you sew them on the button band so that they don't pull. So I'm going to try that on this sweater. I just haven't chosen buttons yet which is fine because I can't wear it. Okay. Um, I knit this whole thing on size 6 U.S. needles. I used um, the, the Zing circular needles. And, I mean, really, really nice. Um, this was, it's been so long since I knit it because I've mostly done the blocking and stuff. This was the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, which is really lovely. I mean, I feel like it. It's not scratchy to me. It might be a little scratchy, but since I like wool, it really doesn't bother me at all. So non superwash wool of the Andes, and it, it is in the, let me look. I don't even remember the colorway. Well, evidently I never wrote the colorway down because I must have known it so well, but I will, I know it's a copper something but I'll put it down below. So this was my Amy Herzog Acorn Trails sweater, and all the extra details will be in the description box below if you would like to knit this yourself and would like to know um, about what size I knit. And I usually wear about an extra large top, I would say, so that's about the size that I knit. So I think it was a 44 and a half that I knit. I'll, but I'll put that all in the box below. So I, I love this. I think it's gonna be a really classic style cardigan for me to wear for many, many years. The other things I finished were a bunch of baby projects. Anna Knitter in her Anna's Knit Club for August said to knit a pattern that is something you always go back to and that you enjoy knitting. So I decided to pull from my stash because I was fluffing my stash some Caron cake leftovers, which I really love these kind of like cake yarns that change colors. They are a lot of fun to knit with and they take a lot of the decision making out of knitting because you don't have to 
think about when you're going to change colors or what colors you want to use. So I really enjoy using the Caron Cake um, and similar kind of cake yarns. Now, if you've been watching a while, you know that I have a lot of friends having babies and I made a make nine board for baby gifts, but it was about 50, 50 boy and girl projects. It turns out everybody had boys, everybody, except for one, one person had a girl. So I had to kind of change and knit more boy things. So I knit the Bon Bon Taupe, Taupe by Tin Can Knits. And this is a pattern that I have knit many, many times. I knit these for all of my kids. Um, this is, I believe, the child size. But I would say that it's a little small. So like if you were knitting this pattern for your child, if they are larger than a toddler, I would go up to um, the like adult small even because this is kind of small for a child. So this one I knit and all my cables are nice and correct. I usually knit the ribbing a little bit longer than they suggest in the pattern. I think they suggest an inch and I go just a little bit further and I love the way the crown decreases with the cables. This is just a really fun, versatile pattern that suits a lot of people. So if you need an easy cabled hat pattern, I definitely recommend this one. So I knit this one out of Caron Cake and then this one, as you can see, I think this color and this color are the same. Um, this one, oh, maybe this one's the child one. This one seems a little bigger. I knit this Caron cake bonbon toque. And this one, I messed the cables up. They're all supposed to go the same direction, and I did some the opposite. So those are both the same, and <laughs> these are opposite. <laughs> but it's okay. And then they have the cable decreases on the crown. So I knit both of these and then when I was fluffing my stash on the video uh, one of the things I pulled out was this baby hat that was on needles and unfinished at the time I still have a end to, to weave in but this is a Patton's Croy sock yarn I don't remember the colorway name but it's kind of a blue jeans color with these stripes put in and this is a very basic baby sock yarn hat. I cast on on size two needles, a hundred stitches. I do about an inch of ribbing, two by two ribbing, and then I just knit until about five inches. And then I decrease the crown. So since it's a hundred, I start with decreasing every tenth, and then I go down from there. So this is another baby hat for another friend. And I weighed my yarn and I had exactly, well maybe like two grams more than I needed to make the same exact hat again. So I'm using the leftovers to make a second hat. So that will be four baby hats to give away to four babies. I'm not supposed to show whips yet, but it's the same thing. So there you go. And then on my Make 9, I had uh, the Welcome Baby Socks by Anna Knitter, and I decided to knit those. I knit them out of Regia Baby Smiles, and I don't know if this yarn is discontinued or not, um, so let me know if you know. I bought this in this blue colorway and I also bought it in the pink colorway in full bags from Little Knits where they have a lot of close out and discount yarns. So I bought these several years ago and I've made hats and socks and things out of them. 
and I think I'm down to my last couple of skeins. So they're little 25 gram skeins. They are oh so cute, but you can make a full pair of socks for a baby. And actually I didn't even use, this is the one I used and I feel like there's still half of it here. So the Welcome Baby socks took very little yarn. And I even made them bigger. So I increased Anna's pattern by four stitches. And so I made the leg four stitches wider, and then I made them about a half an inch longer because I wanted them to fit an older baby. So not necessarily just a newborn. So they have this, they're just a basic sock. And I knit a long cuff, which can be rolled over the heel is just a stockinette heel and these are a great way to learn how to knit socks if you have never knit socks before Anna's free welcome baby sock pattern is wonderful and you can knit a pair of socks in a day I think I might maybe took a day and a half or two days to knit these and I will probably knit another pair soon so these are the Welcome Baby Socks by Anna Knitter. <laughs> I need little itty bitty baby sock blockers. So, and then with the rest of this yarn, and I think I have another partial skein, I will probably knit another pair of those. So that is five baby boy gifts. I think I only need a couple more. So I'm doing pretty good. And baby hats, so fun, so fast. Those are all of my finished objects. And now we're gonna talk about the whips. So I have five whips to share with you today. Um, one of my whips that I have worked on is the old shell Shetland shawl which I am making out of hand spun but it looks the same because I'm just making like a long gray strip so there's nothing exciting or new about that so I'm not going to show it. Um, the first whip I would like to show you is a half finished object and that is my opal Van Gogh socks. And this is the skein. I still have a lot of this left. These are for my 14 year old daughter. She wears a size 10 shoe. I bought this opal yarn from Anna Knitter. And I don't remember which Van Gogh it is. I know it is not Starry Night, even though it looks like it. Um, but she chose this because she is very artsy. And she told me that I don't have to make them match. So. I'm just going to start the next sock um, straight away from the ball and not worry about the stripes lining up. This was my easy, fun purse knitting for a while this summer. I did a basic vanilla sock because I wanted something mindless. Two by two ribbed cuff. I did about three inches of stockinette and then I did my normal slip stitch heel. And guess it. And then I just knit and knit and knit until they fit her size 10 feet. So I'm going to be casting on the second sock soon. I didn't cast it on yet because I was working on those sock yarn baby hats in my, as my purse knitting. So as soon as I finish that second baby hat, I will need this back in my purse. And this will be my purse knitting. Now, another project that you haven't seen in a while is the Hamra Child's Cardigan. And this is, oh, I'm in the middle of a row. <sighs> of course. This is a sweater pattern that I started for one of my daughters, but I kind of fizzled out and I did not finish it. And then now I have a niece that will fit it. And so I'm finishing it for my niece. 
and I was hoping to finish it for her birthday this August, but my sister did not get me her measurements for me to know how long to make the arms, so it is not done. But this is the Hamra cardigan, and when you see these on, uh, I think I bought the pattern on Ravelry. I don't know if I bought it or if it was free a long, 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 long time ago. Um, often it's a two color cardigan. So you would use one color for these stripes and then one color for the body. But I had made a baby blanket in these wonderful jewel tone rainbow colors. This is all Knit Picks Brava Sport. And I was using the leftovers to make the yoke of the cardigan. And I just love how it turned out. Um, it's going to have buttons just at the top. And then I'm going to, look how bright that is. I'm going to knit this down to about, I think she said 13 or 14 inches from the underarm. This is where I was the last time I showed it. So I've done two and a half inches, but I'm kind of in like the stockinette land right now. It's not very exciting. And I was waiting for measurements, honestly. So, so, and then I just have to put the arms on. The only decision I have to make is if I want to repeat any of the rainbow colors at the wrists or at the bottom of the cardigan. And I haven't really decided yet because I love the purple. And I kind of like how this really stands out at the top. And I don't know if it's around the wrist, if it would kind of make it look not as classy looking. If it would like look more, I don't know. But anyways, it's very rainbow bright, right? <laughs> but so this is the fairy tale colorway Knit Picks Brava Sport. And these are all just other, I don't know what they are, but. You can go look at the Knit Picks website because they have such bright colors in this line of yarn. So this should be finished very soon because I have the measurements now and I am motivated to get it off the needles and into the mail. But they live in Arizona, so she really doesn't need it right now. But when her mom measured her, she told her, that it was for a sweater and then she wanted to know where her sweater was right away and I said maybe September <laughs> but I just have it in this little like vintage Santa bag that I made one year for Christmas I love it I'm forgetting to go check out the craft stores and keep an eye out for more cute fabrics and make some new bags Okay, so my next project is the Bohusian Bohusian socks from One Skein Sock Yarn Wonders. Last time I was deciding whether or not I wanted to put the patterning, see the patterning, on the foot. And I really, I think I really was just tired of knitting the leg because I had been trying to make the legs really long. And so I opted to just make the feet purple. So I decided no patterning on the feet at all. I'm just going to do the feet completely in purple. So this is Patton's Croy in the Midnight Orchid colorway. I was knitting socks with Emily of Goldenburn. We both had the same yarn. And the purple is Stroll Fingering in Eggplant. It's blowing out really bad. So this is Stroll Fingering in the Eggplant colorway. And so I am just in this, this is where I was last time. And I made this stitch marker. This is a it was a little fruit charm set from Hobby Lobby. And it had this little, I don't know if this is a tangerine or a peach, I pretend it's a peach. And they had a little red one and a little yellow one and I just stuck it on a stitch marker. I think it's so cute. So 
and just doing the stocking at feet. So just carrying on and <sighs> yarn management. I think that was one reason I didn't want to carry on the pattern was the yarn management was driving me completely insane. So here is that Wild Orchid colorway, which I absolutely love and I'm excited to have so much left over because I'm hoping to make myself shorty socks with this now. So that's on the list of things I want to make, have the yarn for, but haven't cast on yet. <laughs> okay, this one I haven't shown in a little while. It is my marigolds and oh, lilacs and marigolds shawl. I am knitting it out of hand spun. And I talk about this in a past episode, but I will put all the details in the show notes because I do not remember everything. So here is this shawl. And I'm sorry I could not stretch it out more. I was at this little sheet the last time I showed it. So I've put a good three inches maybe. I did this section and then this one. Now my numbers were off. The way this pattern is, is it's not charts. I love charts. I don't know what it is. I just love charts. It's written out and it says like section one, section two, section three, but the sections don't have names. So I would forget where I was because, you know, I could you know, use a pencil and mark on there. This is where I stopped. I didn't do that. I forgot where I was. And so I don't know if I skipped a section or if I skipped a couple lines, but I was about four to six rows off in the number count. So I had to add in a few rows of garter in between this section and the next section. And I think it looks fine because there's this garter here with the two stripes of the contrast color and then I just kind of repeated it up here. So each section has a slightly different two color stitch pattern and since they're not named I can't be like oh this is the, the skippy stitch section or this is the you know color work whatever section. They're just all a little bit different. I mean, this is obviously just garter. This one is kind of a ribbed ish. I don't know. But I really am enjoying knitting this. It's fun to knit a shawl, and I love knitting my hand spun. So this is the top of the shawl, and I started it with the the lightest color of the gradient and then it's just going to get darker and darker in this teal as you go to the bottom and close to the bottom you'll I'll mostly have the contrast more orangey and yellow color so this is what I have left of the first ball of that contrast color this is what I have left of the second ball of the um, variegated green hand spun. This is all chain plied, so it's a three ply um, chain plied hand spun. This is the second ball. And ideally, I will use up all, I want to use all the yarn. So even if the pattern ends, I will repeat one of the sections. So I'm not going to know I'm not going to know what it's going to look like cuz the, the sections don't have names. I'm just going to have to kind of guess. <laughs> so it's been a kind of a mystery shawl for me. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. I love 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 knitting hand spun. It's like a surprise every single time. You don't really know 
what it's going to end up looking like. So that is the Lilacs and Marigolds shawl, and it is written for two skeins of DK weight yarn. So the last thing I have to share with you today is one of the projects that I want to knit, um, but I haven't cast on yet, but it is my next sweater project. So since I finished my Acorn Trail sweater, and I intend to finish the Hamra sweater for my niece, I oh, and I knit the, the T sweater for my 12 year old, now it is time to knit a sweater for my 14 year old. She is taller than me. She's about five foot eight, maybe getting taller. And she probably needs a whim about a women's medium. So I'm trying to decide if I have enough yarn to make a sweater. She's not very picky about what style it is. She, she really wants me to make her a shawl. Uh, but I feel like she would get more use out of a sweater. I don't know. But let me show you the yarn I have. Now, this yarn was a Goodwill find last summer. So it is Cascade 220. And I believe it is the paints. Let me see. I think this, these were already all wound up. They, someone had donated a whole bin of yarn. And yeah, so this is Cascade 220 Paints in the Caribbean Sea colorway. And I have 12 ounces of this. So this is purples and teals. The color is not quite right. I think it's because of my light right now. It's more teal than that. That looks very blue on the screen. So I have 12 ounces of this, and then I have three and a half ounces of this Cascade 220 Heathers. And this color is purple, purple Heather, that's easy. So I was thinking about doing um, the neck ribbing and puffs and, and maybe about around the bottom in the purple. If I have 12 and three and a half, I have 15 and a half white ounces. And I have to decide whether that is enough for a sweater. Um, she does have long arms and long torso, so it's not gonna be a tiny sweater. Another option I have is to add in this teal color. This is Calypso Heather Wool of the Andes. And I thought this might be a possibility. But I have not chosen a pattern. So if you have any ideas, I am thinking that the paints is so wild that it would be nice to do something really simple, like a simple kind of classic, maybe like a V-neck uh, pullover, just something very, very simple and classic to tone down the crazy. But I don't know, she's artsy, she would wear anything. So if you have any ideas, this is worsted weight, we'll see. Help me with ideas. I would love to cast this on and get her a sweater knit before winter, winter, which is like late December for us. Okay. So I think that is all I have knitting wise for you today. I really appreciate you coming and watching. I am hoping to film a spinning only episode um, later this weekend and get that out next week as well. I will likely be doing one major main episode a month as we get back into our school schedule and uh, please just pray that 
fall does fall does come to Texas. It has been so hot. I have almost completely switched to just wearing dresses all the time because anytime I put on pants, I just feel like so hot. So dresses and skirts have been my way to go most of the summer. Um, we did do a lot of like thrifting this summer because it's something that my husband really enjoys doing in his time off. And our daughters were taking private music lessons with someone that lived a few towns over from us. So we took them to lessons one day and then uh, went to the thrift stores in that area. And I found six dresses that day. It was something that has never happened to me before where I found six great dresses in the same day. <laughs> at thrift stores I think the most expensive one was $8.99 so you really can't beat that and I was excited to add them to my mom wardrobe because you really can't beat those prices so that was a really good thing this summer we really enjoyed being together as a family we really didn't travel a whole lot um, especially with the heat we felt like we needed to be here to check on our chickens. We did have several chickens die because of the heat. And a lot of that was the different breeds. Some of them deal better in hot weather than others. Um, but we have seven new baby chicks that we got at a feed store a couple of weeks ago. And they are all doing great. And so we're adding back to our flock which is a lot of fun. Today I got to play with a sourdough starter that a friend of mine gifted me. Um, I have done sourdough several times over the years. It's just one of those things that when you're a stay-at-home mom and like doing homey and crafty things, you've got to try sourdough at least once. But I usually get really into it and then burn out and my starters die. And so I was excited to get a new starter to get to try to play with that again. Um, one of my favorite recipes is the sourdough hamburger buns from King Arthur Knits. So I'm looking forward to making homemade sourdough hamburger buns again. Hope you all have had a good back to school if your kids are going back to school or if you are homeschooling. And I hope that you are all staying cool and I look forward to talking to you again. Don't forget to leave me comments below with your questions for my Q&A. And don't forget to keep fluffing your stash because any pictures you post on Instagram with the hashtag um, TPK Fluff Your Stash Now 2023 will get you entered to win those beautiful yarns from Jessica of Cafe Bean Counter Knits. So I will talk to you later. Bye.